What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad. All right. Now we can go ahead and get into it. Okay. Highway Heidi in the building. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> How are you today? You know what? Lockout man, I am doing great. And one of the reasons is because I'm off. <laughs> Now, now today's a Tuesday, man. How how is it possible that that you're off on a weekday? On a weekday, okay. So let me explain it. When you're an owner operator, you can kind of pretty much do your own schedule how you want fit, and that's what I'm doing. And one of the reasons is I moved out from another state, and um, I've been off um, for a while because I'm trying to get adjusted and everything. But um, that's really the reason. I've been. I moved to another state. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now your phone says Texas. So, are where, where where are you, and where did you move from? Okay, I moved from Louisiana, and I am in Texas, outside of the Houston area. And so, I'm new to this area. Um, I'm not a country girl, but I'm living in kind of like a rural area, which is new to me. But you know, it's pretty cool, especially coming off the road when everything is so chaotic, and then coming to like peace and quiet. So I'm loving it right now. Okay. Well, of course, Louisiana is just right across the border. So you was born and raised right, in Louisiana? Right. No, actually, I was born and raised in Texas. And then I um, moved to Louisiana. And I was in, I lived in Louisiana for like years, like 20 plus years or whatever. And so most of my family live in Texas. So I came back to Texas. I'm a Texas baby. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you say you was in uh, Louisiana for years. Was you was you down there during the time of uh, Katrina? No. Now, yes, I was, but I don't stay in New Orleans. I didn't stay in New Orleans. I was more in the um um like the um Bossier area, Shreveport area, out that way. Okay, okay. So you you was there when it happened, but you wasn't the your your city wasn't affected by the hurricane. It wasn't affected by the hurricane. However, a lot of the people came to the city, you know, trying to get away from that area. So we were flooded with a lot of um, um, people from that area, but we wasn't physically affected by the water. No. All right. So how so how was it um, down there for you during that time? Like, I know the hurricane came and. It did uh did a lot of devastation, kind of put a lot of people out of you know out of commission and everything. But being that it didn't affect your city, but it affected your city because of all the people migrated from there to get away from everything until everything kind of like turned down. Did it did it turn your gas city up and upside down, or did it bring more problems than than solutions? Well. Um, from what I can see at that time, to me, it wasn't any problem, but that's when everybody came together. You know what I'm saying? And so it was an outpour of like help and um, charities and, and volunteer. Unfortunately, I help all the time. So I was able to help money wise, but physically I wasn't able to go out and, you know, help like with food banks or things like that. But I was able to do, you know, thing, my part to help because I could put myself in that position and I would want that same thing. I would want somebody to help me. So, uh, but um, it wasn't anything that made the city like crime or nothing like that. No, no. Everybody came together. So that was a good thing. Now, it's been years since the, you know, since Hurricane Katrina. Has has any of the, you know, I, I've seen videos of, of some places that still haven't been, you know, recovered or, or anything like that. You know, they, they still, you know, I've just recently seen a video of Sis Flats still being down is, uh, I mean, years later, you know, now I, I know you don't live in the, you know, live in the state no more. But before you move, was there any, re you know, did you guys, did you guys see any type of, of, of recovery happening after the after the hurricane? You know, I did. And let me tell you, uh, my family and I, we went down to New Orleans and um, after Katrina, like years after Katrina. And so the city, you know, of course, building when devastation like that happened to a city, it takes time and years for the city to get, to get back on track. However, when I went down there, I was really surprised on um, the recovery and the the way that, they, you know, they 
the the, um, the streets and the buildings and you know it didn't look like it looked bad but it was still decent enough where you could still be um, go to the city because you know New Orleans is a tourist city and everybody knows New Orleans is known for the food the jazz and Mardi Gras. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, it, you know they did good. All right, all right. So you migrated from there to Texas. Well, you know, of course, you said your family is there. So I guess, move. I guess, moving back to Texas was like coming back home for you. Mm -hmm, exactly. And you know, you know, one thing I've learned, and I'm sure everybody can maybe relate. 2020 was a year of. You know, just sitting down doing some soul searching and doing like, what's important to you? What's important to you? And so, um, I, you know, I had some a different, you know, some transition in my life in Louisiana. So, you know, I'm like, you know what? What's important for me right now is to be close to my family. And so, what I need to do is I need to get back to Texas. So, I, I took a year of was grinding. Matter of fact, two years. I took two years of just working really hard on the road, on the world road. I wasn't hardly coming home. I was just working, 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 saving, 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 because I already knew myself one year to prepare myself to move back home. And that's what I did. And so I've been here in Texas two months. All right. That's what's up. Shout out to Texas. Shout out to Houston. <laughs> I mess with Houston. Chopped and screwed and everything, man. I, you know, that's 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 uh that's my second home right there. You know, my 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 followers. Majority of my followers is from Houston, Texas, from Texas. So, yeah, shout out to Houston and Texas as a whole, man. So, Highway Heidi, like, right. what you what you was doing before you got into trucking? Okay, so let me tell you this story about this. Now, at that time, I was married. And so, my husband at that time was trying to get my ex or whatever. He was trying to get me to be a truck driver. And, like, I don't want to drive no trucks. I don't want to drive no truck, trucks. But all of a sudden, the job that I was working at the time, I was working like a manager at like a check cashing place. They closed. They just closed out of nowhere. So then I'm left like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? So, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try the whole truck driving thing. That's how I ended up at Roadmaster. All right. So, so you, so you was married at one time. You got any kids? You, you have kids because you're doing all this moving in there. I do. Uh -huh, okay, so how, I do. I have a son. How did that affect them with the with the move and everything? Well, at that well, um, I waited until my son was out of high school before I um, transitioned. So he's you know gone with his life. You know he's a young man doing his thing, and so you know the me being at home and a dedicated mother, you know. You know, I've done that. So now I can take the time to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, you and your husband, how long have y'all been married? We've been married over 10 years. So, man, over 10 years. Well, I, I've been married over 25 years. And, you know, finally, we we just, you know, we just divorced not too long ago. Um, Crazy. Wow. I mean, I, I mean... Y'all two, he was your inspiration to getting into trucking. Did was it? Did you guys do any type of team drive? Did he teach you how to drive a truck? I mean, would I mean, you know, being that he inspired you to get in it, I'm sure you would have you would have jumped along with him in the truck. All of the above. You're exactly right. Okay, so once I he you know inspired me to go ahead and he encouraged me to go to, to trucking school, which I did, and. You know, we'll get into that whole trucking experience. But um, he taught me everything that I know. So at the time when he was teaching me, you know, it's like I had a live-in supervisor 24-7. We teamed for, I say, about four or five years together. So everything that I learned, I learned from him because he has like 25 plus years in the game. Okay, Highway Heidi. So what happened? Like, I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all getting this money together. I mean, this is what everybody talking about. And, yeah. you know, this is what everybody right. talking about. Like, you know, get this team in together, get this money together. Yeah. And, and, and y'all was together. Like the, I mean, y'all was together in the truck because they say, right. they say that the trucking industry destroy marriages. So as you guys being <laughs> together, getting this money, 
traveling the world. What well, what happened? Like <laughs> what happened? Okay, let me explain. Okay. Now I now this is my personal experience and you know everybody could be is different, but I feel like when you are a married couple or a couple period and twenty four seven you're in the truck together and then when you're off, you off together. So where is your where is you? Where is your me time? You know what I'm saying? And sometimes for me, I'm just going to say for me, my husband, when we were out on the road, he would think because we're doing all the things on the road or because we're going out to eat or, you know, we wasn't in the truck all the time. You know, if I'm on the road, I'm going to stop. I'm going to enjoy myself because, you know what, that's free travel. Right. And so um, sometimes he would think because we did all these things on the road that when we got home, we already did those things. I'm like, you know, so I wanted to get out the truck um, from him. And be so we can have time to miss each other and have time to enjoy being together. And, 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 you know, and I had a little bit of supervisor. So he was just always on me. I mean, he has, uh, my, my husband or whatever, he played in the NFL and then he was, he was military. So can you imagine what I went through? I had like a drill sergeant, sergeant on me all the time. I and so that imagine. got, it was too much. It, <laughs> I, I can imagine. Like I, 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 I can imagine that. So you, so right. you, you, you know, you know, Highway Heidi. You, you're exactly right. You, you need that. You need that time away from each other, and you guys don't have it. And that's why mm -hmm. I keep, you know, that's why I tell people like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, married couple, or significant other. When you guys get on that truck and y'all over here talking about, yeah, we about to go and get that bag, get that bag, but then. Y'all, mm -hmm. like, like you said, when when y'all get into an argument, the only thing that you could do is go in the back, but y'all still <laughs> in that vicinity. So that, that you know, that yeah. argument never left. And like, yo, pull over to right? the side. Be like, why? We can't pull over to the side. We got to get this. We got to get this low. <laughs> we got to get, uh, yo, I, I need some air. No, I can't pull over right. to the side. We need to get right. so. You know, I, you know, I, I think what you would what, what you said was, you know, you you got off the truck to pretty much to try to save your marriage. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. OK. Right. OK. Right. OK. And, OK. Right. So so you so you did that. But. What happened? Well, so then we just took some time away from each other because. Again, that's a lot of stress. He's training me, and I'm feeling like he just, just he's training me in my mind. I feel like he's training me like I'm a guy, you know? Like, come on, get, you know, get off of me, you know? Just give me a break. Let me learn. Let me, you know, just let me breathe. And then when we're out there on the road, I felt like um, he kept saying, like, we're not on vacation. We got to get the load there. So he's like, work, 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 work. He's a workaholic. And I'm the opposite. I feel like if it's two people in the truck, and we have a, a designated time to get that load there. Let's just take our time and get the load there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But his whole thing and mentality was, it's all about money, 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 money. So then the question is, it's not all about money for me. You know, money, do money make you happy? That's the question people need to ask themselves. You know, <sighs> is it all about that's, money? That's true. And, and so, listen, you know, listen, mm -hmm. listen, I'm... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> It's, it's, it just sounds like deja vu all over again, lockout. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well, my, I, I kind of had the same mentality. I mean, I wasn't in trucking back, back then, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I, I had the same mentality. You know, I had the hustlers cold. You know, I had to go ahead and get out and get this money, make sure that this money was coming in, make sure that my house is taken care of, make sure... My son had food, clothes on his back. He made sure she was all right. So it was all about it, it, it was all about it, it was all about breaking that bread for me, you know. And and she's at the house, you know, kind of like, yo, can we, you know, can we go to this family event? And I'm like, if I miss out on this day, I'm gonna miss out on like, you know, five hundred dollars or a grand or whatever the whatever the game. Well, I can't say that. Um, now, you know, sometimes when you separate from a person and then each person go their separate ways, you're able to really reflect on some things, you know, what you contribute or not, 
or what happened or not, what you did or not. And so I think that's where we are right now, like thinking about what's important, what you want. Um, everybody knows it's already hard out there. If you got a relationship and uh, I'm that girl that you want to keep, then you want to, you got to think about that because if relationships are already hard, a relationship in trucking is definitely hard. So I think right now we just kind of try to like find our way or whatever. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So he's a, he's a truck driver, 25 years deep. Uh, and how, how long have you, how, how long have you been, been in the game so far? Because in the beginning of our conversation, you did mention that you're an owner operator. So yeah. How long you been doing it? Nine years. Nine years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Man, nine years on that. Okay. I'll give you that. All right. So nine years in the game, you started back at Roadmaster. Of course, that's where, yeah. you know, you, you made a TikTok video about your experience with Roadmaster. And it didn't sound too great. Go ahead and take <laughs> us back. Back in the time oh my God. on your experience with uh, Roadmaster slash Warner, okay. because Warner owns Roadmaster. Let's, let's talk oh, about your experience back then. Okay, you know what? You know, um, Roadmaster was something else. Well, let me just say this. When I went to the school, you know, I went in open, you know, just full of ready to learn, ready to learn. Unfortunately, everybody can't be a trainer. And so the trainer that I had, you know, sometimes I'm an energy reader. I can pick up on energy. I don't care where I'm at. I can walk into a room. I can just feel energy. Well, his energy for me was off. I was the first female. I, was, I can't say the first, but I was the only female in his class. So I don't know if, if I was the first female for him to train or what. But anyway, we was training on the 10 speed. And so um, he was nervous. I, he made me nervous. And so everything I did it was wrong. He was just, he was like on me, you know, I couldn't do anything right. And let me tell you this. One day he took me out on the road Seven years ago today. and, um, you know, with a 10 speed, you, you know, you're going to jerk the truck because I'm still trying to learn how to do this thing or whatever. And so he wasn't, he would just, you know, when I looked over at him, he was red. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I could tell he was just nervous. His eyes would be in the middle of traffic. He told me to stop the truck. And he, he told me to stop the truck and get over where he was and we swapped seats. And then he took off. Okay, hold, 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 hold up. <laughs> so he how how long he was how long he was a trainer before you actually got with him? I I don't know because again, this is a school. And you know, and let me tell you, this school was in San Antonio, Texas. So I was in I was living in San San Antonio, Texas at the time. And so I don't know if that trainer to me, I felt like he had like some kind of substance problem or something. I don't know. I can't really say that, but he just had a lot of, he was smoking a lot and he just was very nervous. But yes, that happened. And so can you imagine how I was feeling? I'm the student. I'm already struggling on trying to learn how to drive this 10 speed. Now I got this trainer that's, you know, not too far, in my opinion, of a female driver. Wow. All right. So, <laughs> so this uh, instructor, uh, kind of made you feel some kind of way did you voice your mm -hmm. uh did you voice your concerns with the school on that well no i didn't but i did come home and i did you know speak with my husband about it or whatever so once i you know once i you know he would tell me my mistakes or whatever on the 10 speed you know double you know using that clutch and all that it just was it was new to me i never done that before i never drove a car as uh, standard or anything but no, I never voiced my opinion, but he voiced his opinion to the dean of the school. So here I am sitting in class. The dean of the school told me to come to him. So I felt like I was in high school. I'm like, what? Is this really going down like this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, that happened. So once I met with the dean, he told me his concerns, what the trainer told him. And the trainer was saying that I can't drive a 10 speed. I'm going to hurt somebody. And so the dean took me out on the road. He took me on the road test. He said, you know what? I want to see for myself. So I'm like, okay. But again, I'm an energy reader. He was calm. I was calm. We went on the road. Don't you know I drove that truck perfectly? Perfectly. At 10 speed. So once we got back to the uh, school, 
he told me, when well, you going back to the class, have a good day. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was up. So how, how long was the, how, how long was the school? And let me ask you this, how many people that came to the school because Roadmaster being that is, is, it's a part of Warner, you know, Warner will bring them in and, you know, they will train them and then Warner will pay for, uh, you know, pay for their training. Did that now that since you went to Roadmasters, was that a out of pocket or was that like, you know, like a grant or something like that? It was a grant. I did. Um, I, I got a grant. So it wasn't through like a job. You know how some jobs would say we'll pay for this if you do this. But that was a grant. OK. OK. So, again, how many people started with you and how many people ended with you? Um, if I had to put a number on the class, um, I would say, again, I was the only female and I would probably say it was a class of maybe 15 to 20. Oh, that ain't bad. That, all 20 came out or, or what was the mm -hmm, number? Mm -hmm. oh, all 20 came out? All 20 came out in two weeks. Now, again, this is a two-week program. Oh, this is so a two-week program. So in two weeks, program. you have two. Yes. You Ooh. have the first week, you're going to do your, 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 um, the written part. Of course, that was easy for me. I passed that with no problem. The second week is when you do the, um, the backing up, the straight line back. The everything you need to do, the um, going out on the road test, the parallel parking, you'll do that the second week. So you really have one week to learn how to drive that truck. Okay, okay. And uh, they probably have some, but yeah, they probably have some background of of truck driving, maybe they family or something. But I'm I'm green, I'm just new at this. But let me tell you this: shout out to I I think I wish I knew some of the men in that class. Shout out to all those guys, all of them helped me. I could be I can remember I could be trying to back up or whatever, they would get in um, on the driver's side in my mirror, and I could look back there, and they could just move their hand left or right. When they did that, that's telling me to turn my wheel that way. So those guys helped me make it through the class. That's what's up. Shout out to them, man. <laughs> All right. So, of course, um, of course, you, you went out with the dean. The dean pretty much helped you. You know, the energy, the vibe was good. Did you ever have mm -hmm. any other contact with that, uh, with that instructor anymore? Well, no. Let me tell you what happened on that. So I, I, I assume the fact that the dean wasn't in his favor, he probably was feeling some type of way. And so when I came back the next day, they gave me a female trainer. Oh, wow. And she was an older lady. I'm tell, I'm saying she was probably like 60 to 70 years old, but she was really nice. She was very, um, she was very patient with me. She broke down everything for me. And um, she made me understand, you know, the whole, you know, sh you know, moving your gears or whatever, shifting your gears, back and everything. And so they gave me a new trainer. All right. So of course you uh, graduated. Of course that was nine years ago. Good memory. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's some yeah. awesome memory. Good ass story too. I had to give you that. So nine years later, uh, here you are, uh, nine years deep in the game whole hell of a lot of experience. Uh, let's let's start with like maybe a couple of companies that you messed with, you know, prior to being an owner operator. Um, what was what was those companies and what was your experience with them? All right. So my first company, um, once I graduated from school, um, I went to U.S. Express. I think they changed their name now. And so with U.S. Express. Express. <laughs> Yeah. That's they didn't <laughs> they they didn't change their name. They they still US Express, man. I I'm I'm an alumni of US Express, so yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I'm 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 surprised we uh, now I, I came to US Express in twenty fifteen. Was you was you still with them at that time? I'm it gonna was assume. around that time. I don't know if it was two, I'm thinking 2014, 2015, something like that. Um Yes, I was around that time. And now with U.S. Express, because I was fresh out of school, they rec they recommend that you have a um 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 uh, what is that team? So they paired me with a the team. They did. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. I was I was, I was fresh out of school, and they they after I got finished with the with the with the trainer, I went out on my own. 
They they didn't. Well, really? You know, but you know what though? They they did kind of my my bad. Let me let me see if I remember. I'm I'm in my fifties, so you're gonna have to excuse my memory. But um, no problem. They they recommended me to go out with a train uh with a with a uh oh. with a cold driver and I and I think I, mm-hmm. I I think I turned it down. But go ahead. Oh okay. Well I didn't because at this point I'm still kind of, I don't know you know I, I had an automatic truck so I got out to 10 speed and got into an automatic truck. But I wanted a team because of course uh, we was OTR and I think I was on an account. I was actually on the Walmart account. The Walmart account out of um Indiana I believe it was what so, which um, which, which one? Team. Gas City? Gotta be Gas no. City. It, it's not Gas City in Okay, Indiana? well maybe it could have been. I don't remember that. I just know it was Indiana. I fucking hate Gas City, Indiana. <laughs> uh, they they should but wait a minute. Why did why did he put you out of gas? I mean, why did he put you out of Indiana and not uh New Caney, Texas? Would would that would have been closer? <laughs> Yes, but you know, you know, I'm new, so I'm just going with the flow. I believe we had to run from Indiana, and then we had to go to Colorado, um, and it was like winter time. So both of us are new drivers riding in Colorado, in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. That that sounds. That's that sound, when I learned how. That to, sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Right, and so thankfully, my co-driver at the time he was a male. He knew how to use a date break. So he's the one who taught me. Shout out to Nathan. But anyway, he's the one that taught me how to um, use a date break because I was getting ready to approach the mountain and I was, I wasn't freaking out, but I was a little nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I saw a 6% grade and I'm like, okay, I got to go down. He was in a bump sleep and I woke him up. I said, now what did I need to do? He showed me in like one minute and I got it. So after that, I was able to just go down mountains and um, just enjoy the scenery. All right, that's what's up. All right, so how long you uh, stayed? <laughs> how long you stayed with uh, US Express before you left? Not long, because um, I realized US Express. I don't know. A lot of truck drivers are in trucking for different reasons. For me, at that time and still now, I'm all about getting the highest pay. And so, because of my husband had all the years experience, and I had all my endorsements. I had my hazmat, I had my tanker, and um, that's it, those two I had. And so I was able to piggyback off of his experience. I left U.S. Express in probably three months, and I was able to go to, like, a hazmat company. All right. So during this, so during all this time in this, in your nine years of trucking, when, when, when was it w- that you decided to, you know, team with your, with your old man? Um, well, when did I decide to team with him? Yes, ma'am. Well, um, he actually decided because he felt like being out on the road, um, I need to learn, you know, still in learning stages or whatever. And so he felt like it would be best for him to be with me. He could show me everything, teach me, make sure no one's taking advantage of me, things like that. And, um, I, like I said, I think we teamed for maybe four or five years before I got on my own. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. All right. So fast forward to now, what 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 made you decide to uh to do the owner op thing? Now let me ask you this. Now there's several pieces to this owner op because you know a lot of people consider lease leasing owner op mm-hmm. and all like that, which owner op is what it is. Owner op, you own your own truck, you're not leasing it. I mean, well. You might be leasing it from a bank or from a leasing agent, but it's your truck. So which which route are right. you? Well, I've done all. I've been a, a company driver. I've been a lease driver. And now I'm an owner out, which means I have my own truck. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now that you got your own truck, what, what's, what, what's, the, what's the difference? What was the variance? that you, you know, you use all your years of experience to to mm-hmm. say, hey, it, it's time for me to make this power move in the owner operation. When when did that come about? Well, that came about once I um, was, you know, when you're a lease driver or a company driver, especially a lease driver, those bills on that truck that they want you to pay is very expensive, which means you got to stay out weeks at a time. I do not recommend that at all because that truck note weekly is ridiculous. 
and they were charging us because there's two people in the trunk. They charge a fee for me and a fee, like a, a note for him and a note for me. So if you're, if you are a solo driver and your weekly is three fifty nine, they double up because it's two people in the trunk. That can get really costly along with your fuel and then your escrow. So um, I'm like, if I'm going to pay, or we're going to pay all this money um, to work for somebody else's company and truck, I might as well do it for myself. And then the most important thing for me was I want to set my own schedule. I don't want anyone to tell me I have to be out so many weeks at a time and I can only be out so many days. I didn't like that. How, how, how difficult it was for you to, uh, to go through the process of, oh, uh, of course, saving, uh, get in the truck, then get in the, you know, the credentials needed for the truck. And then I, I guess, uh, I guess the other question was, how, how did you, how was you able to, you know, get your foot with, uh, with some of these brokers? Because, you know, they say that, you know, new drivers, you know, they, they tend to take any and everything and, and, and the brokers is, is like, the devil. So how how did that how how did right. that how did that work for you getting into getting uh, into that? Well, remember now I have a, a co driver, my husband, <laughs> twenty five years. So he watching just listen to him. Now when I first started dealing with brokers and talking to them, I would let them run over me. I ain't gonna lie. I would you know because I didn't know that trucking is a whole nother level. You can pretty much say anything respectfully, and um because they'll take advantage of you. Women truck drivers, don't let them brokers take advantage of you. You got to speak up for yourself. You got to know, first of all, you got to know what you're talking about. You got to know the market. You got to know what's, you know, what the rates are out here because they will get you. They will try you. So for me, I learned, I do my own research. I also, like I said, listen to how he handled the brokers. And I know what areas to go into. I know what areas not to go into. I learned things on my own. I already know how much it costs to run that truck and to pay me. So you got to know those numbers like that. Otherwise, they're going to get you. That's what's up. That's what's up. So give me give me a time like when you actually first started, you know, on your own and you got everything ready. You you ready. You, you know, high, Highway Hottie Enterprises is ready to go. Let's get this first load. How was it getting <laughs> that first load? Okay, well. The name of my company is Breakneck Express, and Heidi on the Highway is my trade name for my T-shirts. It's coming up soon. But, um, well, first of all, I, what, let me tell you what I did. I think anytime you start a business, are you really serious about it? For me, anyway, I wanted to make sure I understood the business aspect of it, you know? So um, it took me, I did, um, I did my business part two years ago. Two years ago, I started my company, but I wanted to make sure everything was, like, um, legitimate. I don't even want to be just like an LLC and don't have everything like all the other state stuff set up. You just an LLC, but are you really an LLC? You know, I want to make sure I have my banking information. I want to make sure everything was set up. So uh, I'm, a, I'm I'm acknowledged as a trucking company. Now I don't have my own authority. I am a lease operator, but I'm working on that because I want to be my own trucking company. That's my ultimate goal. But when I got my first load uh, and I negotiated my first load. I was super duper excited. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh man, because sometimes I'd be like tripping, coming from where I com- came from. I came from uh, a trainer telling me I can't drive the truck, that she would never be able to drive the truck. To now having my own everything, I'm, you know, I'm just amazed. Won't he do it? <laughs> That's <laughs> what's up, man. But yeah, I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. All right. So you got, so that was, uh, did, did they try to lowball you? Or anything like that. I mean, being the new, being being the newbie and everything, I'm assuming they would. Yeah, they tried, but because I knew, you know, one thing everybody's gonna try, whether you're in trucking or whether you just whatever it is, they're gonna try it. But the fact when you start talking and spending out stuff, and you spend out numbers, and you spend out areas that you want to go to, and you spend out the area that you go to, like Florida, and I'm why would I go to Florida when I know I can't get out of Florida? But when you start talking stuff like that, they respect that because it's like, oh, okay, she knows some things. But if you don't say anything, you just go with it. Like, I already know, why would I take a dollar something a mile for a truck, you know, for a load that's maxed out to like 43,000 pounds? You know, you guys just got to know. And so I felt like once I was able to talk and talk the game, the truck and talk or whatever, 
they respected that. So they can't just come to me with any kind of numbers because they're going to say, oh, okay, oh, she knows this. So, you know, that's that's how I feel that I was able to negotiate some good rates for myself. Do you guys do you guys balance the 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 miles along with the amount that you guys got on the truck? Say, like, for example, you you got forty three thousand pounds. Right. And they want mm-hmm. you, you know, they they want you to drive maybe about uh, maybe about five, you know, maybe about 400 miles. Let's, let's just say 400 miles. So when you mm-hmm. when when you doing the math for yourself to come up with a number to give them, do you incorporate the amount of miles that that you do as well as the amount of as the amount of weight that you have? Exactly. Yep, I do. We do. Um, now that's a heavy load. Okay, so I'm going 500 miles. So that's going to probably be what eight nine hours. And so um, I also factor in if it's in the mountains, is it flat land? I fact, you know, the fuel. Everybody knows the fuel is high. Um, so I factor in all of that. Is it going to be toll roads? You know, you have to know these things because they're gonna they're gonna tell you anything. So I, yeah, we, we we factor in everything that it's going to cost to move that load from point A to point B. And then that's how you come up with your figure to give to them. Most time, you know, we're going to, you know, if you know, know how to, if you got to get for gab and you know how to negotiate, you're going to, you're going to go high, right? Because you know that they're going to, they're going to bring you down and then y'all going to find a, me- a medium if they really want you to take that load. All right. So it's like, for example, it, it, it's like a number that you have, you, you start at the top, you, you start, you start at mm-hmm. the top rate. And then you give yourself right. you you give yourself a negotiated rate. So say for example, they they call you up, they say, Hey, we got this load for you. Uh the top rate, the top weight that and I'm going on the low end. I'm I'm sure it's more, but the top rate would be a grand, right? It would be a thousand dollars. All mm-hmm. right. Um that that would be the top rate. That's the rate that you come in with. You say, Hey, I'll I'll take it for a thousand dollars. But your minimum rate will be maybe eight hundred. So they'll come in and say, you know, they'll they'll try to break you down and be like, okay, you a thousand dollars, but we can only do it for nine. And then you mm-hmm. and, and then you'll be like, you go back to them and be like, well, what about nine fifty? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you know they'll be like, right. they'll be like nine. But your but your your minimum would be that eight. Mm-hmm. So you you still making out though, right? Is that is that right. how the is that how the back and forth usually goes between you and the broker? Right, right. I have a minimum. At that minimum, I'm not going below that medium minimum because I already know how much it's gonna take to move that low. And like I said, it depends on all the factors I mentioned before. Um a thousand dollars for two for two hours, oh yeah, I'm taking it. No problem. I don't care if it's in the mountain, I'm going. A thousand dollars for eight hours? No, I don't want that. <laughs> okay. I don't want that no. So yeah, so it just depends on you know it's a, a lot of factors. But right, I have this minimum. If we can't, you know, if you get pretty close to the minimum, that's fine. If you go below the minimum, the minimum, then um, nice talking to you. Have a great day. I don't want the load. I'm not gonna take it. Um, that's just how it is. You just have to be direct and firm. Highway Heidi, man, I'm I'm having a ball having a conversation with you, man. I'm I'm really enjoying myself right now. Now let me ask you this right quick before we get up out of here because I know uh, I know you want to get you okay. some rest and everything. And I do thank you for coming on the Lockout Man podcast show. But listen, what do, what do what do you think? I, I hear all these guys that's over here that has you know that feel some kind of way about women in the industry and everything. Mm-hmm. But I I just you know, listening to you, and I just realized that you was actually trained by a man for you know they yep. got twenty five years in the game. I mean, what do you got yep. to say? What do you got to say to these guys that be like, well, women ain't supposed to be in this industry, and women they ain't supposed to be uh-huh. doing this. But you, she got you, you got trained by a man, like a man actually <laughs> trained you in this industry, so. <laughs> What, what do you got to say about that, man? Well, what I have to say about that is for any man who think that way, m- women are supposed to work, period, but we're working. So let's just start there. 
Don't just, don't just, don't just talk about trucking. Just to start working, period. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I feel like it's okay. I mean, if, if they feel that way, they that's fine. But women today coming into trucking, we ain't just coming in green. We ain't coming in blind. We know a lot of women that I see and talk to really know some things in trucking. And, um, and you know, it's just some things we just not going to, we just not going to accept, you know, and the stigma that is on truck drivers. I really hate that because it's some smart truck drivers out here. I really hate that. But, you know, I don't know. I don't have, you know, I don't really have anything to say about that. that you know, that's personal, I guess. <laughs> all right. All right. TikToker extraordinaire. What, what made you, well, I hate that app, but what, what made you started doing uh, TikTok? Well, let me tell you, the reason why I started doing TikTok is because um, in the future, I'm working on my brand. I'm working on my trademark uh, for my shirts. And my my trademark is Heidi on the Highway. That's the name of the my trade. And so I'm waiting on that to go through. So I felt like, okay, well, you know what? Everybody talk about TikTok, TikTok. My sister's on TikTok as well. And she's, you know, she got all these followers or whatever. She's like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. And I'm like, okay. And I, I you know, I really didn't know how to do it, but then I learned. And so... I'm setting myself up for future stuff. That's what's up. That's what's up. How, Highway Heidi, you guys can find her on TikTok at Highway Heidi. Make sure you guys give her a follow. <laughs> Highway Heidi, man, thank you okay. for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Really? Oh, no, thank you, Lock Up, man. I really appreciate you. Good conversation, and thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Guys, you know the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Podcast. Won't you let me all night? Yeah, take me down. Won't you look in the real way? Yeah, swim around. Won't you to take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a sound.